thank everybody for being out in the Warrensville Baptist Church tonight. Amen. Amen. For another night of our revival. It's been so good. You heard my message today. It's one of the best revivals I've been in in years. Uh, Larry Blevins said it right. He said, you could cut it, or Jim did, said you could cut it with a knife. The last few times we've met and come to church and come together and praise and worship God. Amen. I thank you for being here. Uh, Brother David Welburn's with us tonight. Uh, I'll introduce him a little later and we'll tell a couple of stories and it'll be really good. <laughs> because trust me, the first time I got to go to his church and preach, he got to tell stories. Um, we, we didn't have a lot of good stories to tell. <laughs> it's the first good thing we've done together growing up. But, uh, but it's going to be good. They will sing for us tonight. I've heard these uh, this group sing so many times and it's just a blessing to be here. Amen. Amen. And come to worship and praise God tonight. Does anybody have uh, any prayer requests before we get started? I talked to Brenda and JC today. Uh, JC goes back tomorrow for some tests, and hopefully that's going to go good. And she said that uh, as soon as everything got cleared up, she was excited about them being back with us. Amen. So let's remember to keep them in our prayers. Remember Josephine and Dan. Keep praying for them and Anise, the others. Anissa Elliott, her son is in Winston and Brenner's, and they put him in ICU. Um, they're Anissa doing tests. Elliott. Yeah, her son, okay. Nick. So remember that. And then also Isaac, um, he had a friend at Crown to pass away with cancer. I'm sure we've all got uh, prayer requests. Let us pray. Father, we just love you and we thank you for being with us, God, and giving us another day to come out to worship and to praise you, Father. And God, each and every prayer request that's been mentioned right now, Father, we just take them and lift them up and lay them at your throne right now. Not, Father, God, if it's your will to reach down, touch these, Lord, that are sick, that are hurting, Lord, that's having uh, procedures ahead of them, Father, I just pray you be with them, be with the doctors, God. As they go to see him right now, Father God, we pray for Brother David. God, as he comes tonight, Lord, to speak through him. God, the words that we need to take and apply to our lives and our church. God, just to revive us again, amen, Lord, just to go out. Lord, let our light shine throughout Warrensville Baptist Church. Let it shine throughout this community, Lord, Ash County. Just like John said last night, Lord, there be no darkness in front of us. That it would always be light. God, with anybody that we face and comes across us each and every day, God, we just love you so much. God, we just thank you for the cross. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We pray for the ones that's going to sing tonight. We'll be with him, God, right now. But, Lord, most of all, we want to feel your presence. God, we want to feel you like the day of Pentecost. Lord, just come in and fill us and fill the church right now, Father. We just love you. We honor you. And we praise you. Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and sing hymn number 603. Oh 
always seen them, um, and the words uh, mean a lot to us. So um, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, worship with us this evening. Yes. So.
the beginning and change things. Amen. You can't control what tomorrow will bring. Yes. But if you meet God, He's there. Amen. Amen. So that's what it talks about in this whole song. Yes. Will you meet me here again? All you have to do is ask Him. Yes. Sometimes I think it's we are, our human flesh hinders us because we don't want to ask Him because of our pride. Right. And we feel that I'm not man enough, or it's totally against what I've been taught. But there's many times, I can tell you, I've had to lay it to the side yes. and had to ask him, I need you to make me very That's right. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the Spirit. Amen. Amen.
God. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a word, a word on the heart after that? You want it all like to praise the Lord? I praise Him. It's good to me. Amen. That's right. Amen. God is good. God is all good. the time. All the time. Yeah. You know, there's been a big change in our life. Yeah. Amen. There was times when I would some Saturday evenings go by his house and pick David up so we could go out and see what the other boys were doing. And his mama would be standing in the driveway and wouldn't let me. <laughs> she would make me leave. Mama, you left. That's the way it was. And the only way, really, I know to introduce somebody, sometimes you say a lot of good things about them, but sometimes it works better if you show a picture or two. <laughs> just to kind of reminisce about some of the old days or some fun times that we have had. Do we have one we can bring up real quick, maybe, or maybe two? Uh -oh. <laughs> so I got just a couple. Uh, I thought I had just a couple I brought with me that I thought you might like. But we've done a lot of mission trips together. They have supported me a lot over the years in doing mission work. And uh, so I brought just a couple. It looks like they're dragging it over here. I got one special one that I want to show you, though, before we get started. Technical person handled it. <laughs> 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 I've been waiting to do this for weeks, you know. Right? <laughs> 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 and I want to say, oh, that's what, <laughs> that was just showing how much you love Santa Claus. So, brother, I, I can't tell you who Santa Claus is. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what we got there. Yeah. 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 Oh, so this is the favorite one. <laughs> this was our, one of our high school pictures. And maybe you can, that was probably <laughs> my favorite picture of us together. I've still got it since 1985. And I got a copy of my office, so I'll mail to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, did you give your mama that look? 
Y'all do. I'm surprised y'all live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what we were so mad about. <laughs> <laughs> she probably made y'all get over it real quick. <laughs> But there it is. I, brother, I love you. And I just thank God for what he's done for me and you in our life. And, and how he's changed us. And uh, John was telling some of it last night on us. He just said, you know, I saw a lot of blue lights in your rear mirror growing up. <laughs> but, but the Lord's changed us in a good way. And there was times, I'm sure, that people looked at us and thought that we wouldn't, we wouldn't amount to anything. And God saw something different. And he reached down and got us and pulled us up and dusted us off and he made us somebody. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of times you may forget my name when you leave here or when the Lord's finished with us here years and years down the road. I hope that you can never forget God's name. Amen. 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 You've always got to remember him. Remember that time and that place as they were singing. Meet me back here. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things in your life you can forget about. There's a lot of names you'll forget like me. I remember a lot of faces, but I forget names sometimes. But I'll never forget the time that I walked the aisle and knelt down and accepted him as my Savior. Amen. That's yes, something sir. I'll never forget. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Brother, I love you. If you come and give, share with us what the Lord's put upon your heart, we look forward to it. I'm so glad that won't be displayed through the entire service. <laughs> I, I was going to request that come down. Thank you for letting us be here this evening. Such an Amen. honor, such a privilege. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Amazing job. Amen. Amazing. Thank you for making the trip up the mountain with us this evening. Thank you, Dorian, for driving us up here and getting us here safe. Pray that he gets us home safe after church. But I uh, appreciate y'all coming. Jackie, I love you. Uh, we go way, way, way back. Yes. I'm so happy for you. I will tell you, Warrensville, I get a lot of texts. I get quite a few phone calls. I get voice messages. Your pastor loves you so very much. And he and Tina, they are truly, truly, truly very grateful to the good Lord. Amen. For yes. the Lord letting them minister to you this time in their lives and be your pastor. And uh, he really loves you a lot. Amen. And I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. And every time we talk, and every time I just read one of your texts, uh, truly, I'm like, thank you, Lord. Okay. You take care of things. When we can't see it, you That's take right. good care of things. Right. It's so good to be here uh, this evening, as we said. And revival. Now, the one thing that we don't want to do, and, and we all use this terminology, all of us. We use it at Fishing Creek Arbor. All churches use it. But we tend to call the last night of revival the closeout. Amen. We don't want to do that. No. Uh, I've been hearing about what a great revival you've had this week. Yes. And, and I mean, man, Jackie, just every day, he is just like pumped. <laughs> and, and he's been calling and saying, let me tell you what happened last night. And, and you don't want that to end. And real, true, Holy Ghost sent, heaven sent, spiritual revival, it can't end. What is revival anyway? Uh, revival, Webster tells us, it is a resuscitation of life. A reviving of that which has gone to sleep or lost consciousness. Revival is for the church folks. Amen. It's for the church folks. It's for the Christians. You see, a, a lost person, they can't get revived because the Bible says when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, lost people need to get saved. Amen. Church people get revived, and if we really get revived, we will walk out the back door after every single service, and that revival will carry Amen. over into the community, into West Jefferson, into Ash County, and lost people will be a fruit of revival. Amen. Lost people being saved will be a result of revival. Yes, right. I heard tell of this uh, this lady that lived in this real crowded neighborhood. 
And there was a lot of highfalutin people that lived around there. Anybody here know what I mean by highfalutin? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I'm not using a Woods County term here. Uh, she, she had a lot of highfalutin neighbors, and, but uh, she had this old dog that she loved. She loved her old dog with, with all of her heart. But, man, he was just a, he was a pain. He was all the time digging in the neighbor's flower garden or, you know, messing in the neighbor's yard, turning the neighbor's trash can over. She was always trying to vouch for him or make excuses for him or clean up after him. And one day she she looked out the window and right in her backyard <coughs> stood her old dog that she loved so much with her next door neighbor's precious white pet family rabbit. Limp in her dog's jaws. <laughs> Dead as a doornail. She said, oh no, what am I going to do? They will call the pound on my dog. <clears throat> she looked around everywhere. She didn't see any sign of anybody anywhere. She ran out in the yard real quick and grabbed that dead rabbit, ran back to the house. She filled up the bathtub. She took that dead rabbit in the bathtub. She washed him. She lathered him up real, real good. Got him good and clean. Then she rinsed him off. She laid him up on the counter. She took the blow dryer and blow dried him real, real good. Got him good and dried. Got his hair combed down and Late that night, when everyone was obviously asleep in the neighborhood, she snuck next door and sit that rabbit right up in his cage, sort of propped him up in there as best as she could. She shut the door and she said, well, he's still dead, but at least they won't know my dog did. <laughs> next morning, she had her coffee brewing. She had her window cracked, her kitchen window cracked, and she's kind of keeping an eye on things and listening to things. Sure enough, just a few minutes, she heard her next door neighbor, ah! She went running outside after lunch. She was shocked and surprised. She said, oh, my goodness, I heard you screaming. What is it? What's wrong? She said, it's a rabbit. It's a rabbit. She said, oh, no. Oh, goodness, what happened to your rabbit? The neighbor said, he died two weeks ago, and we buried him, and he's back. <laughs> 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 Lifted him up. 
And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Father, in the name of Jesus, we once again ask that your anointed, inspired, infallible, and errant holy word would go forth under the empowerment of your anointed Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts this evening from the word of God, through the spirit of God. Let us all be receptive and obedient to what the spirit of God would have us to do. And it's our prayer, God. It's our prayer tonight, God, that we will have revival continue tonight. We will see revival continue tomorrow. Yes. We will talk to Jackie next week and hear yes. how revival continues to go on and reach Ash County for the glory of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Amen. Amen. First thing I want you to notice, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 3, look at the dynamic view of them. The dynamic view of them. Now, I, I label this point uh, the dynamic view of because when these guys were first getting started, they weren't so dynamic. Kind of like those two characters that you saw on that screen a while ago. <laughs> you know, uh, and we're still not that dynamic, but thank God for God's grace. Yes, and thank God that he reaches down to the guttermost to save to the undermost. That's right. and, but, you know, Peter and John, as the church was getting started, founded, energized, and off, uh, uh, getting going, <coughs> these guys were a dynamic duo. Think of some of the dynamic duos that we've known in our lifetime. Batman and Robin, Lone Ranger and Tonto, Starsky and Hutch. You better remember Starsky and Hutch. You remember Starsky and Hutch, right? Yet? That many of you? That many. Man, that was two of my favorites. I love Starsky and Hutch. Brooks and Dunn. I guess that's okay to say up here. <laughs> There's been some dynamic duos through history. Well, here we've got a dynamic duo, and it starts right there in verse 1, and you see the key conjunction. Peter and John. We're not together. Would everyone here tonight help me and say together? together. together. Let's do it one more time. Together? together? Together. These guys just come off of the greatest revival ever. The church just got started. Holy Spirit came down. Hearts got lifted. Salvations were had. And they're going back to church again. That's a good sign. Amen. It's a good thing to go to church. You should always go to church. In the prayer room, there was a precious man over there. He's had a really, really hard week, a really, really hard day, and he almost went home, but the Holy Spirit said, no, just stay. Amen. Just stay, because he wanted to be at church and to be at revival, one more service, Amen. so bad. You just got to show up. You've got to be there. I heard about this guy, man. He loved this girl across town. He just loved her. He thought she was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. He wanted to ask her out so, so bad, uh, but he just couldn't muster up the courage. He couldn't get brave enough to ask her. He wrote her a letter Every single day for a solid year. She married the mailman. <laughs> you just got to show up. Amen. You got to be there. That's how church is. But they're on their way to church. And what we see here, this dynamic duo, we see that they are partners. You remember how they got called? Jesus said, you're fishermen. But if you'll follow me, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Yeah. You guys don't realize it yet. You don't understand it. You can't see it, but I see the potential in you, and you're getting ready to become a dynamic duo. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labors. If they fall, one will lift up. Will you please say that with me and help me? Lift up. Yeah. Lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Isn't it good to have brothers and sisters that we can lean on, Amen. that will help us, that will lift us up and encourage us? And that's exactly what these guys were. They were the dynamic duo. As this message goes on, as everything begins to come to pass in this chapter, if you look down in verse 10, when they're getting questioned about the healing of this man, in verse 10 it says, Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel. That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I remember your pastor telling us just a few minutes ago, that's the one name you're not ever going to forget. Yes. You might forget Jackie Stone. You might forget David Wilbur. You might forget Thomas Cooper. You might forget Gloria Swanner. But if you love Jesus, you'll never forget the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. That's right. Because it's in his name. Peter's telling them, and whom you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead. By him this man stands before you whole. This is the dynamic Duo, verse 13, when they saw the boldness of the dynamic duo, Peter and John, they perceived they were unlearned men, untrained men, but they marveled because they took knowledge. They realized 
They had been with Jesus. Don't you want people to say that about you? Don't you want people to look at you, to talk to you? And, and maybe we may not be the smartest people on earth. We might not be the best looking people on earth. We might not have this or that going for us. But if somebody leaves a conversation with us and they say, well, I'll tell you one thing about that old boy. I'll tell you one thing about that old gal. They've been with Jesus. Yeah. Isn't that what matters? Amen. Well, that's what's going on with Peter and John. We've got a dynamic duo. But number two, we have a designated destination. Look at the carriers. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Now this guy's got some friends or family, or maybe both. <coughs> He's never walked a step. He's never walked an inch in his life. He was born lame. And every day, some good people would carry this man to the temple gate. It's the beautiful gate, the gate called Beautiful, east side of the wall. We've been to Israel. We've seen this gate. We've looked at it. We've taken pictures of it. It faces the Kidron Valley. It is the more adorned gate. 75 foot high, 60 foot wide, and it leads to the largest courtyard of the temple. So think, they would locate him at this perfect spot right there at the gate, the entrance of the temple, where the most traffic goes by. So hopefully he can get the most alms to support his livelihood, because this is all the guy's got. Yes. Every day, sitting at the gate, with his cup out or his hand out, Hoping somebody will give him a, a denarius or, or a pence or something on the way in and out. And by the way, he's at the temple, so hopefully somebody's gone into the temple, experienced the morning or the afternoon sacrifice, and they're feeling a little bit more generous after going to church. So maybe on the way out they're going to drop something. So he's located at the perfect place, and people have carried him there. Aren't you so thankful that somebody helped carry you to Jesus? Amen. Amen. Some of you right now, you're thinking back about grandma, you're about grandpa, about mama, about daddy. I'll tell you one thing about my mama, and you heard Tina talking about her a while ago. She carried me to church nine months before I was born. And isn't it good for parents and grandparents and families and neighbors that will get these kids and help carry them to church? Because, folks, when you carry people to church, the fruit will come back. Amen. The sheaves will come back. Psalms 126, 6. He that goes forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. We see the carriers. Look at the connection. Verse 3. Who seen Peter and John. Now, again, notice that conjunction. And... Peter and John. This passage is about so many different people. Namely and foremost, Jesus. And we've got a lame man who's hurt really, really bad. We've got a great big crowd that's going to experience this. But we've got Peter and John. Don't forget that dynamic duo. He sees them about to go into the temple and he asks for alms. He's asking for alms. He did not ask for a miracle. You know, a lot of times God will give us way more than Amen. we ask for. Amen. Amen. And that him who abundantly yeah. gives us all that we can ask or think. He doesn't ask for a miracle, but a connection happens right here. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful. The laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers out into his harvest. There has to be a connection. There always has to be a connection. And revival is to help us leave the, the Walnut Grove this week and in weeks to come to make connections out there. Because revival is not only experienced in here, it must be shared out there. We see the carriers. We see the connection. Look at the concentration, verse 4. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look on us. Now, Peter's the only one doing the speaking right here. John, he's kind of at this point in time, he's kind of like the silent partner. But he's right there. You remember, these, these uh, are two of the three that was the inner circle of Jesus. Mount of Transfiguration, Garden of Gethsemane. When he went in to heal the young man, he would take Peter, James, and John. Yes. Well, here's two of them. So there is a concentration, and, and Peter is concentrated on this man. John is concentrating on this man with him, and Jesus is concentrating on the entire location and situation that's happening. Jesus is always concentrating on our lives. 
He's always, no matter what situation we're facing, he's always there concentrating on it. So we see the dynamic duo and the designated destination. That is the partners and that's the place. But thirdly, we see the divine deliverance. And here it brings us to the power. The power. Now in this, as we begin in verse 6, we see a time to lead. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, have I none. But that which I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he's doing it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It is time Peter preached the first sermon. Peter's the one that stood up and began speaking in Acts chapter 1 verse 15 when they was trying to figure out what to do next. He was the designated appointed leader at this point of the disciples to get the church going. Jesus had left it that way. And that is time for him to lead again. You notice in verse uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 14. And it says there in 2.14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them. So he's taking that leadership role. Somebody has to take the initiative. This goes back to John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. You remember that? Peter, do you love me? Who do you know I love you? That's right. Take my sheep. You sure you love me? Feed my lambs. You really love me? You know all things, Lord. You know I love you. Feed my sheep. Jesus reinstated him after he denied him. He denied him three times, and he asked him three times, do you love him? He reinstated him three times to cover every single denial. That shows the grace, the love, the mercy of God. It's a time to lead. It's a time to lift. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. There's that lift. Won't it grow? Do you need a lift? You've been having a lift this week. I've been hearing from your pastor. You had a lift last night. Revival's, in essence, revival is a lift. Warnsville. We're at Warnsville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that was. We're going to grow back. Okay. Well, it <laughs> but it's good to be at war <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Jackie let me get through with it. Wars, boy, you've been getting a lift. Forgive me for that. <laughs> oh, uh, he had me so tore up when I got up here. So, Wars, boy, you've been getting a lift. That's what revival really is. It's a lift. James chapter 4. And verse 10 reminds us, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Amen. When we, when we, go, when we get down, when we go through the hard times, you remember Psalms 121 and 1, I will lift my eyes unto the hills where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker, the creator of heaven and earth. Jesus knows all about lifts. He knows how to get a lift and he knows how to give a lift. You remember what he said? John chapter 3, verse 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then he said in John chapter 12, verse 32, If the Son of Man is lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples unto myself. Think about Jesus. He came down for me and you. He came down from heaven for our sins. Then he was lifted up on the cross. He laid his life down on the cross. They lifted him up between heaven and earth. Then after he died on the cross, they took him down. They placed him in a tomb. But three days later, hey, he lifted man. up again. Amen. Then he walked around down here for 40 days. He ministered for 40 more days. He took his disciples out to the Mount of Olives and he lifted up again. He knows all about giving a lift. Amen. Amen. Nobody can give a lift like he does. And there comes a time, and that's what revival is. It is a time to lift. And it's a time to lead. You see, he don't just lift us up so we can sit down in a pew and just kind of ride it out. He lifts us so that we can leap for him. Amen. So that we can love for him. Now, I want, get the picture. Get the picture of what's going on here, okay? Here's the guy. I mean, he's just he's sitting at the gate. 
It's all he could ever do. Peter and John just experienced an incredible revival. And he just wants some alms. He just wants some alms. But there's some, these two guys just come by. And you know, he's thinking, okay, I'm going to get some. Silver and gold now by none. But such as I have in the name of Jesus, get up. Yeah. This is Peter. This is John. Will y'all say, hey, Peter and John? Hey, hey, Peter and John. <laughs> so they lift him up. The Bible says immediately his ankle bones and his legs and his muscles receive strength. So, so they've got him up now. And he's like, you know, hey, hey, no rehab. This man has right. never walked a step in life. Right. We don't need any rehab. Amen. There's no therapy going on here. There's no walker. I mean, and so they kind of, and he's like, look, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah. And, and it says he goes into the temple leaping, Amen. leaping, and praising God yes. and giving God the Amen. glory. Amen. Warren's bull. I know who you are. <laughs> you need a lift. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something about this revival this week. West Jefferson needs a lift. Ash County needs a lift. There's a lost and dying world outside. The walls of this church that need a lift. And what we get in here this week, Amen. we can go out there. Amen. Yes. And Jesus can give them a lift. We're almost done. Almost done. It's time to leap. Now look. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Oh, but guess what? They're watching. Verse 9. All the people saw him walking and praising God. Everybody in Jerusalem is like, what is going on? Amen. That's the dude that sits at the beautiful gate every day. That's the guy I gave a pence to just last week. He's never walked. They're all watching. They are all watching God do something that only God can do. <laughs> Amen. And that's revival. Yes. They're wondering. Verse 10. Then they knew that it was he who sat and begged. He used to sit and beg alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Oh, but I tell you. Peter, he's good, ain't he? They just lifted this guy. Peter and John just lifted this guy up. Peter sees this crowd. What in the world's happened? And Peter says, wait a minute. I've got an audience. I've got a prop. I've got a demonstration right here. And I know I've got a sermon to preach to these people. So Peter sees the most golden opportunity. He has a captive audience. And look, look, look at uh, the, the reaction. See, we, we have a definitive demonstration. This is his problem. Verse 11. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John. Come here, come here, John. Come here, man. Come here, Peter. Look, you see, he goes into the temple leaping, crazy, but as soon as he comes out, He can't let go of these guys. He is hanging on tight. Yes. These are the guys that came by and gave me a lift. Amen. They came and picked me up when I was falling and I couldn't get up in the worst way. They're the ones that came. And by the way, these guys really have given me a lot of lifts in my ministry and in my life. And I love them. Amen. But, but that is what was happening with this guy. And Peter, Peter sees an opportunity. And look, look, he sees the reaction, verse 11. Now look at the recognition, verse 12. So when Peter saw it, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, God, you just did a miracle. 
Everybody's wondering about it. Everybody's watching. Here we go, God. So Peter recognizes the opportunity. Now look at the response. The response continuing in verse 12. He responded, right there it is, to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why do you look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? It is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of your fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. In the name of Jesus. And he goes on to tell them in verse 12, Neither is there any other name given under heaven. The name of Jesus, whereby men must be saved. It's all about the name of Jesus. And the whole time, the guy absolutely can't get away from him. They can't get him away from him. When people really lift you up, Amen. help you get revived in the Spirit with the Lord, That's right. you, you really want to be close to him, don't you? Amen. Well, this guy, man, he is he is clinging to him. He's right there. He, and I, I say that at some point, Peter and John's like, okay, we got to go. And the guy's like, can't I just hang out with you guys? Can't I just hang around with you? I just want to go with you. There's nothing like a lift. Do you need a lift? Amen. I think you've had one. I think you've had one, Warrensville. <laughs> and because of your lift in here, there's a lot of people out there Amen. that need a lift. Amen. We all need a lift. Everybody that's sitting over here that came up here with me, every one of you, you've given me lifts. So many lifts. Amen. So many times. And you know what I'm talking about. Every one of you sitting there thinking of times you helped lift me up. You've given me lifts. You've given me lifts. You love those people. When you look back, they gave you lifts. See, sometimes it may seem insignificant. It may not even seem like a big deal. Just a gesture of kindness. Bear with me for just about two more minutes. I have to share with you this story. One day when I was a freshman in high school, I saw a kid from my class was walking home from his school. His name was Kyle. It looked like he was carrying all of his books. I thought to myself, why would anyone bring home all of his books on a Friday? He must really be a nerd. I had quite a weekend planned. Parties, a football game with all my friends tomorrow afternoon. So I shrugged my shoulders and I went on. As I was walking, I saw a bunch of kids running toward him. They ran at him, knocking all of his books out of his arms, tripping him so he landed in the dirt. His glasses went flying, and I saw, I saw them land in the grass about 10 feet away from him. He looked up and I saw this terrible sadness in his eyes. My heart went out to him. So I jogged over to him as he crawled around looking for his glasses and I saw a tear in his eye. As I handed him his glasses, I said, those guys are a bunch of jerks. They really should get lives. He looked at me and said, hey, thanks. There was a big smile on his face. It was one of those smiles that showed real gratitude. I helped him pick up his books and asked him where he lived. As it turned out, he lived near me. So I asked him why I had never seen him before. He said he had gone to private school before now. We talked all the way home and I carried his books. He turned out to be a pretty cool kid. I asked him if he wanted to play football on Saturday with me and all my friends. He said yes. We hung out all weekend and the more I got to know Kyle, the more I liked him and my friends thought the same. Monday morning came, and there was Kyle with a huge stack of books again. I stopped him and said, Hey, boy, you're going to really build some serious muscles with that pile of books every day. He just laughed and handed me half the books. Over the next four years, Kyle and I became best friends. We were seniors and began to think about college. Kyle, deci Kyle decided on Georgetown, and I was going to Duke. I knew that we would always be friends and that the miles would never be a problem. He was going to be a doctor, and I was going for business on a football scholarship. Kyle was valedictorian of our class. I teased him all the time about being a nerd. This is a true story. He had to prepare a speech for graduation. I was so glad it wasn't me having to get up there and speak. 
graduation day, I saw Kyle. He looked great. He was one of those guys that really found himself during high school. He filled out and actually looked good in glasses. He had more dates than I did. All the girls loved him. Boy, sometimes I was even jealous. Today was one of those days. I could see that he was nervous about his speech. So I smacked him on the back and I said, hey, big guy, you'll do great. He looked at me with one of those looks, the really grateful one, and smiled. Thanks, he said. As he started his speech, he cleared his throat and he began. Graduation is the time to thank those who helped you make it through those tough years. Your parents, your teachers, your siblings, maybe a coach, <clears throat> but mostly your friends. I'm here to tell all of you that being a friend to someone is the best gift you can give them. I'm going to tell you a story. I just looked at my friend with disbelief as he told the story of the first day we met. He had planned to kill himself over the weekend. He talked of how he had cleaned out his locker so his mom wouldn't have to do it later, and he was carrying all of his books and all of his stuff home. He looked hard at me, gave me a little smile. Thankfully, I was saved. My friend saved me from doing the unspeakable. I heard the gasp go through the crowd as this handsome, popular boy told us all about his weakest moment. I saw his mom and dad looking at me, smiling that same grateful smile. Not until that moment did I realize its death. Never underestimate the power of your actions. With one small gesture, you can change a person's life. Amen. For better, for worse. God puts us all in each other's lives to impact one another in the same way. Sometimes somebody just needs a little bit. Amen. And that's what revival is. Yes. It's getting a lift in here. Yes. And it's giving a lift out there. Your pastor's coming. Your minister of music is coming. They're preparing us a hymn of invitation. Would you please stand? <coughs> It's a revival reach. And it reaches beyond tonight. You've had a great revival. Way before tonight. But now it's time to let revival reach. Amen. And there's a lot of people that need to live. We came in here and we got a lift. Let's go give them. Amen. If you're here tonight, you've never been saved. Come get the greatest lift of all. Amen. He was lifted so that he could reach down to lift you out of your sin and out of your shame and give you eternal life and give you his grace and his mercy. Ask God what he wants you to do Amen. in this invitation. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to all of our hearts. Let us know right now what you have us to do. Let none of us contend with you. Let none of us ignore your voice. But let us all be willing to do whatever you say do. This is your invitation. It's your soul. It's your church. Warnsville. These are your people. And we pray that your will and your way will be done in each and every heart. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you for coming. I didn't brother. realize it. I didn't realize a whole lot of it at times. Yeah. It come to me. I appreciate you and let me. Camera off a line now. <laughs> love you, brother. Thank you. Did I kick it again, Scott? You're all right.
straight ahead. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the directions I give everybody. God's good. I just want to say I thank my church family. You've been there for me. God brought me here about 30 years ago, and it was family from the first time. You've been there for me during good times and bad times. Yes, that's And I thank you, and I love you. Time limit here. It's always God's time. Amen. Amen. <coughs> 
friends she has supported all the years that he has. Thank you for preaching the word all the time. Back door. 